So we're back in the Stalked by My Doctor cinematic universe. Yes! This time we see the original victim from the first film, Sophie Green. Sophie now has dark hair instead of blonde, and she's having nightmares about Dr. Beck. I'm a doctor. We're told it's been two years since the events of the first movie. Links to the first two films are in the description, by the way. And it turns out that Dr. Beck has got away with it and is a free man. Oh, I see. Cut to Dr. Beck, who is about to start a new job as a college professor. He's in bed with this woman. Apparently, they've been dating for three months, and she tells him that if they're going to spend their lives together, they shouldn't have any secrets. Oh, dear. So she admits to a short lesbian phase in college. But we know Dr. Beck's secrets are a fair bit worse. No matter what you tell me, I'm not going to stop loving you. <laughs> He tells her he was involved in a court case recently and that he managed to convince one of the jurors he was innocent. But that's all in the past. When his girlfriend pushes for more information, Beck admits it. Kidnapping and attempted murder. He tries to play it down as a big misunderstanding, but clearly his girlfriend is spooked and she's out. As we know, Dr. Beck doesn't take rejection well, so he gets the knife out. It turns out that he's gone so crazy that he started to see another version of himself. This version seems to represent the sensible side of Dr. Beck. Sensible Beck tells him to take his pill, and the now ex-girlfriend escapes. Back at Sophie's house, she's packing for college. Neither of her parents recall paying her tuition bill for Wittendale University, but Sophie says it's fine and they just accept it. Mom, Dad, relax. They wouldn't enroll me in class. This semester, if we weren't paid up, we're fine. Sophie is being pretty cagey about her suitcase, and when she opens the trunk, we see she has loads of posters advertising a student petition to remove Dr. Albert Beck. At Southeastern Arizona University, the dean of the medical department is introducing Dr. Beck to his students. Beck is imagining all the girls in the class flirting with him and stripping down to their underwear. In reality, they just want to ask about the kidnapping accusations. Yes. I read about you on the internet. Did you kidnap that girl? Then in walks a hooded figure who's late for class. I think we know who this is. Oh no, it's not Sophie. This is Melissa, who's a big fan of Dr. Beck, and she faints. It sounds like she has vasovagal syncope. Okay. Clearly, Dr. Beck is already in love with her, and yep, now he's got his camera out and is taking photos of Melissa from behind a tree. Imaginary sensible Beck tells him to stop it, but he carries on, and he's seen by Sophie. The next morning in his office, Beck finds what appears to be a love note. He opens it to find it says, Guilty Pervert. <laughs> <laughs> After class, Melissa asks if he can go over a few things with her. It's clear now that they both want something to happen. That night, we see Sophie snooping around in his office and messing with Dr. Beck's student handbooks. The following morning, he's handing them out. Oh, look, the pages have been replaced with porn magazines. Is this some kind of sick joke? Beck looks over the security tapes to find the culprit, and he looks pretty chuffed when he finds out who it is. Sophie Green. The next day, Beck confronts Sophie and they make a scene in front of the students. Beck tries to make out as if Sophie is bipolar and delusional and reminds her that he was found not guilty. As Sophie challenges this, Melissa comes to Beck's defense. Sophie is now hiring thugs to beat up Dr. Beck as he leaves work. I don't know what's wrong with this guy or why he's walking like this. It seems pretty clear he had one thing to do and he can't even do that right. What an idiot. <laughs> But anyway, they do it and a beaten up Beck is discovered by Melissa who helps him to his classroom where he teaches Melissa to stitch his arm up. She does a good job, walks him to his car and gives him her number. He's now totally in love with her of course and starts imagining them performing a song and dance about how much they love each other. Stars and sky, you and I. What? Melissa then confronts Sophie about having Beck beaten up. You hired those guys to beat up Dr. Beck, didn't you? Sophie then slaps her and it turns into a full fight. The dean is concerned because loads of Dr. Beck's students have dropped out of his class. Beck tries to say it's Sophie's doing, but the dean says there's no proof. A meeting has been arranged for tomorrow with Beck, Sophie and the school board to put this all to bed. Beck wants to get the upper hand, so he uses a restraining order proposal to distract Sophie as he drugs her cereal. Smart. Sophie starts being sick and Beck comes to the rescue and makes it look like 
Sophie has taken drugs and that once again, Dr. Beck has saved her life. So it looks like tomorrow's meeting is cancelled. Melissa has heard about Beck's heroics and comes to tell him how impressed she is. Sophie has been kicked out of the school and comes storming in angrily and attacks Beck before Melissa pushes her off. Then Sophie is thrown out by security. On her way out, her mum calls her and Sophie explains what she's been up to and that it's working, as Dr. Beck is getting sacked. This is just too much. I'm sorry. Sophie also explains that she has a plan to get rid of Dr. Beck for good and her mum agrees to help her. Melissa is sad to hear Dr. Beck is leaving so they go out on a date. Melissa asks if he's ever been married so he tells her his twisted version of the events that took place in the second film. That link is also in the description. Melissa explains that she doesn't like men her own age and that her ex was 51. She also reveals that she has a crush on Dr. Beck. Excuse me? So he takes her back to his house and gives her the tour. But oh dear, by his bed she sees a framed picture of herself. Hang on, she's into it. They start at it, but Sophie is coming in with a knife. She sees them banging and drops the knife. She says she's now seen how happy he can make a woman and apologises for pushing him away. What? <laughs> Melissa gets Sophie to join in, but oh no, this was another of Beck's fantasies. Only the Sophie bit, however, as it seems that Melissa is still there when he wakes up. Why? Why? After she leaves for class, Beck goes out to the garden to have breakfast and is smacked over the head by Sophie. When he wakes up, he finds himself tied up. Sophie is standing over him in a white coat and surgical mask, saying she's going to cut his cock off. But Melissa has forgotten her homework, so she comes back and sees Beck tied up. As she goes up to save him, Sophie attacks her and they fight. Sophie manages to escape and has her mum as an alibi if they call the police. The police are at Beck's house now and they make it clear to him that they think he should be in prison for earlier crimes and that it's weird that he's banging one of his students. Sophie's plan seems to be working as her parents told the police she was with them the whole time. Later in bed, Melissa suggests they kill Sophie. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We have to kill her and Beck agrees. We then see Sophie saying an emotional goodbye to her mum as she leaves the house. Beck and Melissa are outside her house waiting in a car. As Sophie drives off, they follow her and they end up down this alley in the city. Melissa is having second thoughts about the plan so Albert says it's okay, he'll do it. But Melissa grabs the gun, runs to Sophie's car and shoots her, then blows the car up. Then they wipe the gun for prints and bury it in the desert. Because of the way Sophie died, Beck is a suspect in Sophie's murder. So the police are on their way. Melissa says she doesn't want to speak to the cops so tells Beck not to tell them that she's there. Then they hear Melissa screaming from upstairs. She's tied herself up and made it look like she's Dr. Beck's prisoner. Oh my god. He's insane. He tried to kill me. When they try to arrest him, Beck syringes the cops and drives off. Back at the house, police find explosives under his bed. And Melissa is telling them that Beck turned into a monster and that he was always talking about how he was going to kill Sophie. Beck cannot accept that Melissa was pretending to like him. What if somebody came in the house and tied her up? When I went downstairs. <laughs> you don't really believe that, do you, man? So he follows her. He sees her buying hair dye and makeup, then arriving at this house. And Sophie, who's supposed to be dead, is also here. They seem to be planning a new identity for Sophie. I'm not sure if a blonde wig is enough, as every photo we've seen the police use of Sophie shows her with blonde hair, but never mind. Beck jumps out, holding a syringe to Sophie's neck, and asks Melissa to explain what's going on. Why'd you do it? It turns out Sophie and Melissa have been best friends since they were six. And after the court case, Sophie came to her to ask for help. As for Sophie's dead body, that was a corpse Melissa took from the morgue, which she left in Sophie's car with a load of explosives. Sophie also took a leaf out of Beck's book and with the help of a family friend, made sure the dead body's dental records matched hers. Sophie is now in disguise because she planned to live out her life in hiding, just so Beck would go to jail. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. Beck syringes Sophie to sleep and then chloroforms Melissa. When they both wake up, they're tied on tables. Beck imagines he's lecturing back at the college and explains to the imaginary students that his plan is to remove their hearts, clean them, and put them back into the other one's body. Oh dear. As he goes to anaesthetize Melissa, she smacks him over the head with a frying pan and runs to the phone. We're not sure at this point if she's managed to get through before Dr. Beck stamped the phone dead, but Melissa goes to hide behind the bed and Dr. Beck sees her. But she's come up with a gun and it's pointed at Beck's head. It turns out it's not loaded, but Melissa still manages to use the gun to knock him out. One more time. The police have arrived, but there's no sign of Beck. He's got away again. 
When the police ask Melissa and her friend what happened, Sophie's wig has slipped and it's totally obvious that it's her. So the police rumble the girls and they have some explaining to do. But at least Sophie is back with her mum. Dr. Beck is driving off with imaginary sensible Beck and discussing his love life. He is still determined to find love. So expect him back hunting for a new victim soon. Good. Good. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.